Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Olson Andrews this morning. And it uh, looks like we got a few people on vacation for uh, summer break. So uh, let's sing Con Gusto uh, as we begin our service. Mighty to say. Please stand as we sing. Mighty to say.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remember what our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. We should love the Lord our God with all our hearts. We should love our neighbors as ourselves. These two commandments explain the way God wants us to live. that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Our first lesson from Galatians, chapter 5, on page 5 in the bulletin. The Galatians read. A reading from Paul's letter to Galatians. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. lesson this morning about the fruit of the Spirit. Page 550 in the Spark Bibles. Please take out the Spark Bible now and turn to page 550. The fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. Paul helped people understand how to live the way God wanted them to live. One time, Paul wrote a letter to a group of people called the Galatians. The Galatians had a new church and they needed lots of help. One of the problems they had was that they were always arguing. They fought and fought about all sorts of things. The Galatians didn't always agree about what it meant to be a church and what rules to follow. They had a hard time getting along, and it was getting in the way of them making a good church. Paul wrote a letter to the Galatians to tell them to stop fighting. He had some great advice. To the Galatians, the letter said, I am so happy that you believe in Jesus, but all your, your fighting is getting in the way. You're not living the way the Holy Spirit tells you to live. I have a suggestion to try. Instead of living like you are, live with the fruit of the Spirit in mind. Show love, joy, peace, and patience to one another. Be kind, generous, and faithful. And remember to be gentle with one another and always show good self-control. Live with the fruit of the Spirit in mind. That's the way the Holy Spirit wants you to live. The Galatians looked at each other. They were very quiet. Paul was right. They weren't living the way the Holy Spirit wanted them to. What, they, what were they thinking? All this fighting was just not right. At the end of, of his letter, Paul wrote, the way for you to get along and be a church is to let God's love fill you. May the grace of God be with you, Paul. Each day, the Galatians tried to remember the words of Paul's letter. They said yes to peace, no to fighting, yes to kindness, no to anger, yes to being generous, no to being greedy. Little by little, the Galatians saw God's love and showed it to others. They felt loved by God and they loved each other. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please stand for our
St. Luke. Glory to the Lord Christ. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I look around and see that a lot of people are probably this summer getting ready to go and enjoy a vacation. I heard on the news that air travel this summer is exceeding uh, air travel in the pre-COVID uh, year of 2000, 2019, rather. Uh, of course, the gas uh, price of gasoline is a little more that this summer than it was last summer, but Americans are getting out and, and seeing things, and I hope that all of you who take a vacation, especially you young folk who go on vacations, can do what I find to be the most fun thing to do when I go on a vacation. And that is, go to a museum. I love to go to museums, and in 2019, right before the coronavirus hit, the pandemic hit, uh, Margaret and I went to Washington, D.C., where my uh, daughter and son-in-law and two grandchildren were living, and went to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. It's really one of the, the most fun things to see. They have a massive collection of gemstones, and the one that I think struck me uh, more than anything else was the Hope Diamond. The Hope Diamond is blue in color. It's about the size of a walnut or a golf ball. It weighs 47 carats, and it's valued to be over $300 million. And they display it in such a way that the lights hit it, and you can see just all of the facets illuminated. It's really one of the most beautiful things I've, I've ever seen in, in the world. And I thought a lot about the Hope Diamond and that trip as I was reading our scripture lessons for today, because I think there is one set passage, one sentence, that is one of the great jewels of the verses of the New Testament. And I'd ask you to look with me at our epistle lesson from Galatians chapter 5, and look at verses 22 and 23. They're near the bottom of the page, and if you want to find something that would be a great memory verse for this summer, this one would be it. It starts on the fourth line from the fifth line from the bottom, and it reads, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. When I was a young Christian years ago, I learned this verse and actually learned it to the tune of a song. And it was real hard not to break out singing, but I wanted everyone to have a worshipful experience as best as possible. And I'm sure that would throw a wet blanket over it. But has anyone here ever learned a song 
on the fruit of the Spirit. No one ever, well, I've got work to do, I guess. The uh, fruit of the Spirit, seeing the hope diamond, made me think about the fruit of the Spirit because there are two things you can say about it. First, one, it's singular. Notice it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit. And two, it's a dynamic fruit. And here, the Apostle Paul gives us nine facets of that fruit that the Holy Spirit brings in the life of each one of us. Nine facets. And so I think if we look at them, I'm going to, to look at the nine. I'm going to make it a little easier to, for us to grasp them. And I'm going to break them down into three groups of three. And in each one, it'll tell us a little bit about what the Spirit seeks to do in our life. And the first facet, the first group of three, are love, joy, and peace. Some commentators have called this the fruit of godliness. The fruit of godly character. Because these fruits describe the essence of how we have understood God. God is love. God is full of joy. God is the God of peace. And so we hear these and we think about how you know, we're told to love God because he first loved us. We're challenged to have the joy like Jesus had, that heavenly joy that he could look ahead, enduring the suffering and the despising the shame and carry out his will. And a peace, Paul says in Philippians, Philippians, that transcends the suffering and circumstances of life, but will pass all understanding. You see, the fruit of godly character are those workings of the Spirit that are trying to shape us, shape us into looking like God Himself. And so these fruits, I think, are how we are to live the Spirit. Some have called these the fruits that turn our heads upward. And when we look at the kind of person we want to become, we all have our images and idols and icons and people that we emulate. And the Holy Spirit would have us turn our gaze upward. And remember, that the work of God in our life is to give us the mental abilities and acuity and virtues that would make us like Him. Now the second group of three, if the first group turn our heads upward, the second group would have us turn our eyes outward. The second group is patience, kindness, and goodness. This what could be called the fruit of godly compassion. Because the Spirit wants to change not just our inner core, but how we relate to everyone in our life, whether they be a Christian or a non-Christian or the created order, but to look with patience and kindness and goodness. Now, in this sense, goodness has an idea of generosity with it. To be gracious to others. To be patient and long-suffering. And to realize that, you know, no matter how long you have followed Christ, you're probably like me. You're, you would have thought you would have been farther along than you are. It's a continual struggle to follow Him. And remember, others struggle too. And we are called to eternal patience, to get along with one another, and to be kind. When you think about it, that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians, when he talked about the nature of love in 1 Corinthians 13. He said, the first two things, love is patient and kind. And so the fruits of godly compassion would have us walk in step with the Spirit. You know, 
Some of you maybe next weekend on the 4th of July will go to a parade or, parade, or you'll see one on TV. Those of you who have served in the military know exactly what it means to walk in step with somebody. That means you have a, to walk not so much looking where you're going, but looking as well at how everybody else is moving. It's the spirit work to make us move think and feel and serve as one body, the body of Christ. And finally, the third group of three groups are not the ones that turn our heads upward to look at the character of God or outward to have compassion upon God's world, but to look in, to examine our own it's the fruit of godly constraint. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Some would think that this fruit is all can be summarized by self-control. To be a person who is faithful. Now here it doesn't meant to be faith, have faith in God, but to be a person whom others can see as faithful, true honest, dependable, consistent in the way you handle the different circumstances of life. Gentleness. This is like meekness. Someone who is malleable and flexible and ready to yield to the Spirit of God however He might lead and to do or shape or bend or mold our lives into whatever he would like to make us into. And finally, self-control. You know, it's a special gift of the Spirit that we are able to live with the kind of self-control that God wants us to live with. Self-control stops us from getting angry and lashing out, from acting vindictive, from sowing those seeds of dissension. It's a form of training whereby we, we learn how to behave in our inner being with the behaviors that Christ would expect of us. The Apostle Paul told Timothy and complimented him about his faithfulness in being trained by the Word of God. And that's a good way to experience, to understand it. It doesn't come naturally. It's something that over time, and over practice, and with a lot of failures, it just becomes not second nature, but first nature. And I guess you could say, that's the fruit of the Spirit to me. Something that's going to make us into a person who yields to the will of God. You see, the fruit of godly constraint empowers us to pray the prayer. Not my will, but thy will. Thy will be done, which we pray in the Lord's Prayer. So you can see all of these different facets of how the Spirit will work in our life. You can see how, how it can remind you of the most precious stone, far beyond any price that can be placed upon it. It's the presence of God Himself. And there, the fruit of the Spirit is held up like that multi-faceted jewel that we might be able to, in our lives, catch the light of Christ. And through us, in our personality, in our will, it will be bent and shaped that others can see in you and me the presence of God. Now, one thing that I don't want you to do is to commit yourself this summer to producing the fruit of the Spirit. It's not something you can work on. It's not something you can labor for. 
The fruit of the Spirit are like other fruits, the natural consequences of a natural course of events. However, the fruit of the Spirit is different and that it is a supernatural consequence of a supernatural event. And so this summer, let us make the fruit of the Spirit our prayer, that our lives would yield to His power, and that God would give us strength and the ability that we might live lives that resemble the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control of the working of God himself. And let us pray that God would give us that fruit in such a way that when we see others and they see the Spirit of God shining in our places, faces, the truth of God, and his presence in our life would be reflected or refracted and others would know he is true and he is faithful and he is loved because of the fruit of the spirit that they see in us. The prayers, of, let us offer our prayers to God. Lord God, we thank you for the leaders of our church, especially Archbishop Beach, Bishop Edgar, Bishop Skelton, Father Marshall, Father Joe, Father David, Deacon Lee, and our staff, and we ask you to bless them. We also pray for St. Andrew's mission and their vicar, Father Jimmy Gallant. Lord God, we pray for all of those who reclaim the gospel at home and abroad and for all who teach and disciple others, in particular for Father Zach Nash, chaplain at Joint Base Charleston All Saints Church in Florence, the rector, Father Jason Hamshell, Chelsea, and their family. San Jose Church in the, in the Dominican Republic, the rector, Father Sandino Sanchez, and the bishop, Moises Quesada. And Father Rob Sturdy, Anglican chaplain at the Citadel, Lord God, we pray for the leaders of our church, of our country, especially President Biden, Governor McMaster, Mayor Tecklenburg, and we ask you to bless them. Lord God, we thank you for all of our blessings, especially for people who love and care for us. Lord God, 
We ask you to take care of everyone who is sick or sad. Particularly, Lord, we pray for continued healing for Bob Jeffries, for Henry Dunbar, Julia Adams, Shannon Barnes, Ruth Sills, and David Pepper. Other others? Miriam Olshani. Lord God, we know you hear us when we pray. We ask that you answer our prayers as may be best for us. Almighty oh God, who sits on the throne of judgment, we come and beseech thee to bless the courts of justice in our land, and especially the members of the South Carolina Supreme Court. We under them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and may apply the laws of the state and provide for your people. During these uncertain times, grant the members of our first family for a peace which truly passes understanding and the knowledge that you are the best God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now, kneeling, let us only confess our sins to the Almighty God. Welcome to Old St. Andrews today, this beautiful morning, and um, thank you, Father David, for that message, and um, I want to try to do this along with me from memory. Can you do it? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. No, I can't do it. Okay. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There you go. Nine. Okay, so that's a good thing to try to memorize, and maybe I need to work on it too, apparently. Um, but thank you for that message. And um, as he was given the message, and um, I was looking at this card of Red Roses. This is from a funeral service yesterday. Um, two wonderful people, uh, Harrison and Joyce Kimbrell, who uh, were buried here. They both died um, a year and then six months uh, ago. And their memorial service uh, here yesterday and then burial. Um, and their children had this uh, here in the church and um, wanted this to be a part of our service today. And so um, we put this here because of the uh, wonderful heart of love that this church has for others. Um, and that's demonstrated here with uh, the basket for the Ukraine. 
We are sending this week our third wire transfer over to Polska Caritas. Uh, it's an organization in Poland that is helping with refugees. Um, and this uh, will, will be approaching almost $20,000 in relief assistance for uh, refugees from Ukraine in uh, eastern Poland. So uh, again, the, the heart of this church is just so wonderful. Um, our back to school drive is starting up, even though it's just June and we're just thinking about vacations, but um, we're starting to think about back to school and those less fortunate who need our help. Uh, if you'd like to place a donation in the book bag, you can do that to help. Or um, over in the parish hall, um, there are um, names and uh, needs over there. You can sign up to sponsor a child uh, in the parish hall. So I hope you'll uh, consider that. Also in the uh, cast net is described uh, the church in uh, Owo, uh, Nigeria. Um, they are a partner church of St. Uh, Joseph's Catholic Church on Wallenberg. And uh, that church was destroyed uh, in Africa. Uh, in Nigeria, um, that church over there was destroyed by arson. And so uh, St. Joseph's is spearheading an effort to rebuild that church. Your vestry sent uh, a gift of $1,000 uh, to St. Joseph's to help with that relief effort. But if you'd like to add to that, uh, you may do so in, uh, in your extra offerings. Um, so speaking of hearts of love, um, today um, we are honoring Kirsten. Um, and saying thank you to her because of her schedule. She finishes up in mid-July, but with David Aker's schedule, my schedule, and um, vacations coming up, uh, this is the final Sunday that David Akers and I and Kirsten will all be here at the same time. So I'd like for you to come forward now. Uh, the music team, if y'all will come out as well. And um, I'd like for our old St. Andrews family to uh, join me in thanking Kirsten for five years of loving service to our church. Would you all help me? Um, we have this card here that um, Vestry are still signing, and uh, we've had contributions uh, coming in, and we know you're going to have some expenses coming up. So uh, the generosity of this church, there's a check in here for 2500 for you to help out with a few extra expenses, okay? So how about another thank you for those of Let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, whose angels praise you in heaven and sing songs of hallelujah to you, Lord, we thank you for Kirsten for her heart of love, for her great gift of music. We ask you to journey with her, Lord, in the coming weeks as she makes preparations and be with her on her way. Uh, that in this new course of study for her, Lord, that she would continue to glorify you and bless others through her great gift of ministry of music. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all please join us after the service across the way, and you too. Um, uh, in Gilchrist Hall, we've got a little reception over there to say thank you. So we've got a lemonade stand in the parish hall today for Kirsten. And uh, she has a full scholarship, I'm proud to say, to uh, East Carolina to pursue uh, her graduate program in music. So a great future of everyone. Thanks for all you've done for us here. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. Amen.
were exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you.
Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. We do not presume to come to your table, trusting in our righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the promise of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always established. Grant us therefore gracious Lord, so that in the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may have more dwell in him and be in us. Amen.
Thank you. 